Today's video will be about the grey zone or hybrid warfare. You can call it the space between peace and the war. And this is a big topic after Russia started the full scale war. If we look at the war in Ukraine, we can call it a hybrid war. It's a combination between a conventional war and grey zone activities or war. Both before and during the war, Russia have made many types of attacks against Ukraine. Uh, cyber attacks uh, and other grayscale attacks and hybrid attacks. I will not cover them in this video. I will make a special video about that. In this video, I will focus on the Baltic Sea and the countries around the Baltic Sea. Sweden, Finland, Baltic States, Poland. So let's start. Sweden, Finland, the Baltic States, Poland have together with many other countries helped Ukraine during the ongoing war against Russia. And that's not popular by the leadership in Russia. Or what have they done when they don't like what we're doing? When Sweden and Finland addressed that we want them to join NATO, Russia threatened us. Every time we increased the help to Ukraine, Russia threatened us. And when we said it was okay to use our weapons inside Russia, they threatened to nuke us. Is those threats addressed to our politicians and militaries? Mainly they are addressed to us normal people that lives in the countries they threat. Because in the long run it's we who decides. We vote on the politicians we trust. And if Russia gets us not to trust those in power, there can be changes that Russia likes. Dictators like Putin tries to use the fact that we live in democratic countries where our votes count. Where the people can change things. So. The example with threats is not the main thing they do. They have many other ways to try to influence us to do as Russia wants. There are many ways. I will give several examples and then focus on two of them. The purpose with this type of warfare is getting us not sure is the government doing what's best for us it's this the right for our country can i trust the news is this fake war and so on and they are using so many channels at the same times and several methods one channel they are using is social media they are trying to get different influencers to make statements or tell stories that suit their narrative, for instance Russia. Recently it was revealed that several influencers on YouTube, American YouTubers, was paid by Russia Today. RT or Russia Today is controlled by Kremlin, by Putin and are spreading their views on the world, on the war in Ukraine and so on. This is one simple way to influence people believing in their narrative. Another way to get us not trust the government and those who runs our country is cyber attacks. The recent years there have been many attacks here in Sweden. It's quite common that you can't get in touch with your internet bank. Different government uh, websites uh, been hacked and so on and this is not hackers that are after our money. This is hackers who want to sabotage. So we don't trust the system. And often the traces to the hackers is east to Russia. And do Putin and Kremlin do 
anything about those hackers? Of course not. Water is essential for our survival. And if we live in a city, we are dependent on the water supplied to our houses. Water can be stored in a water tower and are transported to you by pipes. So we have fresh drinking water. We have water so we can take a shower and so on. But what happened if somebody sabotage it? Last year in the area around Gothenburg in Sweden, 11 water facilities of different times had break-ins. Nothing was stolen. It was professional. They did go past the alarm. They avoided uh, surveillance cameras and so on. Nothing was done. Doors was open and so on. But why? Why do professionals break into water facilities? This is Malmbanan in the northern part of Sweden. It's a very important railway. It's from uh, Gällivare in Kiruna in Sweden and it goes to Narvik in Norway. One of the most northern big ports that are free from ice all year around. Last year this railroad was broken several times and they suspected sabotage. Why would someone sabotage a railway mainly transporting iron ore? Many types of infrastructure can be a subject to sabotage. Under the sea, on the sea bottom of the sea, we have a lot of critical infrastructure. 2022, two pipelines, two gas pipelines called North Stream 1 and North Stream 2 was blown up in the waters of Sweden and Denmark. These pipelines transport gas from Russia to Germany. That they were blown up is proven, but who did it? Some claims Ukraine and some claims Russia. In October last year, a gas pipeline and telephone communication cable between Tallinn and Helsinki was damaged. And close to the pipeline they did find the anchor and they found the owner of that one. It was this Chinese ship. It had sailed from Russia, but was it sabotage or an accident? Nobody knows. Last week two internet cables on the bottom of the Baltic Sea was destroyed. One is here, it goes between the Swedish island Gotland and Lithuania. That was the first one that was destroyed. The second one was this one going from Finland to Germany. The first one was destroyed in this area and the second one in this area. One ship was passing those two points when the cables was destroyed and it's this one. Yiping Free. It have changed name since this image was taken. The ship has Chinese flag, the captain is Russian and its last port call was a port close to St. Petersburg in Russia. It's an ongoing investigation. The ship have been stopped between Denmark and Sweden and are guarded by the Danish Navy, Coast Guard from Germany and Sweden. And the Swedish Navy have made investigation on both locations to document what's happened with the cables. Will they find the evidence for sabotage or will they believe it's accident? We will see later on what do you list think. I think it's quite strange that cables tend to be broken in the Baltic Sea by Chinese ships sailing from Russian ports. GPS is an important thing in modern days. 
Airplanes use it for navigation, ships use it for navigation. You probably use it in your car to find your way to your destination. What happens if your GPS don't receive any signals or worse, it receives false signals? After Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, the GPS is not so safe anymore. Here you see the jamming in the Baltic Sea, the southern part of the Baltic Sea, Christmas Day last year. And this is the map, the latest map I can find, it's two days old. And here you see the location of the source. Kaliningrad, the Russian enclave between Lithuania and Poland. And a strange thing, the GLONASS system, the Russian GPS system, is not affected. And as soon as any of Russia's neighboring countries in the Baltic Sea is training their navies, this jamming is increasing. But it's not only the military tests are affected, the civilian airplanes are affected, civilian ships and so on. An even bigger problem is GPS spoofing. If you're jamming the signals, you can say it's blocked, so the GPS don't work. When you're spoofing, you're sending false signals, and that can have devastating effects. I'm sure that all of you can imagine what can happen if a ship's captain trusts a spoofed GPS, or perhaps worse, if your captain on the airplane you're uh, flying on is trusting a spoofed GPS. I'm well aware that everyone will not agree on me on every point I made in this video. This is my conclusion based on my experiences. I will come back to this type of topics. If you liked it, please leave a comment. I will be back soon. Have a nice day. Bye.